Hi, Michelle here, your favorite nurse educator, here to talk about symptomatic or unstable bradycardia. Unstable bradycardia is usually caused by one of the heart blocks. So you know there are four heart blocks, first degree and secondary type one heart block, they usually remain stable. It's the secondary type two and third degree heart block that patients need to rely on our treatment. Hopefully they're close to the emergency department and they can get into the catheterization lab and get a stent. And some patients may even ultimately need open heart surgery. But we're gonna start treatment no matter where the patient is, if their heart rate is that slow and it is causing them symptoms. So symptoms of bradycardia, as we assess our patient, certainly number one would include a slow heart rate, less than 50. It might include chest pain, shortness of breath, change in mental status, hypotension, and crackles. Those are the top five signs and symptoms of having a heart attack. And that's when you might have one of those two heart blocks that are going to become symptomatic. So when we have a secondary type two and a third degree heart block, after we made our um, Mona or Anma, we also do a movie, and that is placing your patient on a monitor, giving them oxygen, getting their vital signs, starting an IV, and a 12 liter EKG is very important if they're stable enough to help with diagnosing if they're having a myocardial infarction. So we made the movie and the Mona, but really step one treatment in the algorithm is a medication, and that would be atropine. It comes in a milligram in a 10 ml syringe. We're gonna give the whole milligram and we can repeat it every three to five minutes to the maximum of three milligrams. So that would be three boxes of atropine and hopefully it will help the patient. But atropine works on the AV node. And when you have a third degree heart block, the damage or ischemia is below the AV node. So atropine might not be helpful. So we might have to move on to treatment number two. And treatment number two would be a temporary pacemaker. Most of our hospitals and ambulances have a defibrillator with a transcutaneous pacemaker on it. So we'll use the pads that come along with the uh, defibrillator pacemaker. And the cardiologist will always like us to sandwich the heart with those pads. And that's how the pacemaker will work best. So we apply the pads, make sure the pads are plugged in. We turn on the pacemaker. Usually we set the pacemaker rate somewhere between 60 and 70. And we set the milliampers somewhere between 35 and 50 milliampers, enough energy to have the heart capture the energy and produce electric activity. And then we always put the pacemaker on demand versus the fixed selection. We always want the heart to demand the pacemaker to kick in and work. So hopefully between atropine and a transcutaneous pacemaker, your patient will show some improvement. If not, we have to move on to advanced treatments, and that would include infusions. The first infusion we would try would be dopamine. The recommendation is to start at five and work your way up with dopamine. Now five to 10 uh, micrograms per kilogram per minute is the mid-range dose of dopamine, which is probably which would be most effective for this patient with a very low blood pressure. Low dose dopamine dilates, mid-range and higher doses vasoconstrict for our patient. So that's why we're going to start with infusions with dopamine. If that is not effective, there is epinephrine. Now epinephrine is an alpha which makes vasoconstriction, which helps increase your blood pressure. It is also a beta, which increases the beat. So it does make the heart work harder, but you're looking for an effect of increasing the heart rate and blood pressure. So we'll try that. Hopefully the patient will now be able to go to a catheterization lab or have more diagnostic tests to see what the next steps are for our patient. So finding out what the underlying cause is, et cetera. So that is the bradycardia algorithm for unstable bradycardia. We did atropine, 
transcutaneous pacemaker, dopamine or epinephrine infusion. So thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give my video the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't want to miss any of my videos. Also, please leave any comments you have or questions. And if there's any other topic you think I should cover for you, just let me know. I'll be glad to make a new video. So let me know. And until next time, stay heart smart and healthy. Thank you.